Hi, this is Katherine Scott with drillingcontractor.org. I'm here with Dave Burnham, Vice President for International Operations of Check 6. Today I'm talking with Dave about his experience in the U.S. Navy and how he's applying that to the oil and gas industry. Thanks for joining us today, Dave. It's my pleasure. So let's start off by talking about the U.S. Navy's nuclear power program. There's six pillars, as I understand, to this program. Can you kind of walk us through those six and then tell us how it has enabled the program to keep nuclear incident free? Okay, the, uh, the Navy had to change its culture. Uh, from the beginning, uh, coming out of World War II, um, it was a very vertical command structure. Um, it wasn't really uh, oriented around teamwork. Uh, with the advancement in the nuclear technology, uh, they, they really needed to create a, uh, a system where it was, it was teamwork driven and everybody was backing each other up. So uh, the number one pillar was uh, integrity. They wanted people to not only do the right thing because it was the right thing to do, but to understand that they had to do the best they could at every time because the rest of the crew and the ship was depending on them. Uh, everybody was as important as anyone else and it was, uh, it was critical for them to do everything uh, at, the, at the highest level of uh, integrity. The next one was uh, formalized communication. Uh, they wanted everyone to say things in the same way every time and use the same terms and the same approved acronyms. Uh, they wanted this to be done uh, much like in the cockpit of an airliner uh, where you have a challenge and reply um, checklist. They wanted them to do this so that it would re reduce the uh, chance of a miscommunication or misunderstanding or uh, you know, an order being given that wasn't completely understood. The next thing was a uh, level of knowledge. Okay. The uh, level of knowledge was, was extremely important because the, uh, the increase in, in technological advancement with nuclear power plants um, over the uh, previous generation where it was you know, oil-fired steam boilers, uh, now they, they had to understand the systems, understand how they operated, and understand when uh, there was a problem developing when it was still small and manageable. So they wanted... Um, to continuously train the workforce, um, to do refresher training, and then to, uh, at regular intervals, measure the level of knowledge of each of the crew members. Um, the, the next pillar would be procedural compliance. Uh, the procedures were, were written by the engineers that designed the equipment, and uh, all the parameters that were, uh, were understood would be in the procedure. They wanted everybody to, to do operations the same way, by the same standard every time. So it was critical that, that the crew followed the procedures, and if there was a reason for a deviation, it had to go through a very strict approval process before a change could be made to a procedure. Um, the, uh, the next thing is, is more of a culture shift, and it was a forceful team backup. And, and what the, uh, the basis of that is, is they wanted everyone that was involved in an operation uh, to be part of that operation. They wanted them to, uh, to listen, uh, to watch uh, and to understand what was supposed to happen and the indications that something might not be happening correctly. And they were, uh, they were empowered to speak up and, and things were supposed to stop uh, until it was corrected and then they'd move on. But that was a, that was a key thing and you, and you wouldn't see that in, in the older Navy culture uh, where things were, you know, orders were given and things were done and no questions were asked. Um, and the next pillar is uh, part of that culture shift is questioning attitude. Uh, they wanted every sailor from the most junior uh, all the way up to the senior uh, officers to, uh, to approach things with a questioning attitude. They wanted them to, uh, to be looking at uh, you know, things as you know, mechanical uh, equipment, switch positions, valve positions, and, uh, and always asking themselves, is that correct? Um, when, I, when I manipulate a switch, is the indication uh, what I expected? Um, is this equipment in the right place? And, and asking those questions, they'd always be uh, kind of checking themselves. And, uh, and if, a, if a junior sailor asked a, a senior officer a question, uh, that officer had the, uh, you know, the responsibility to explain the, prob the, um, the equipment and make that junior sailor a better sailor. Uh, but you know, that one time out of 10 that that thing was uh, not the way it was supposed to be, you know, the, that young guy would be the, uh, the hero of the day. And that was encouraged. So uh, that's, that's pretty much the six pillars of the Navy Nuclear Power Program. Great, so then how do we take that and apply it to the oil and gas industry, what can they learn from it? Well, I think, uh, first of all, you have to look at the record. Um, since 1954, when we launched the first nuclear submarine, uh, there's been zero nuclear incidents. And a nuclear incident is uh, defined 
has uh, no uncontrolled or unplanned release of radiation outside the primary boundary. Uh, you could equate that to hydrocarbons outside of the, the boundaries that are set for those. So uh, it's an investment in training. Uh, it's an investment in, in your people to have them understand the culture that's desired and actually the culture that's required um, to make sure that you know, things, things aren't ignored, um, things are always understood, and things are corrected immediately. Uh, the key to the success of the Navy's nuclear power program is not that they don't have deviations. Things do go off track or off plan, but everybody is on track to, to catch it when it's small and manageable and fix it and, and move on. Um, so I think if uh, the oil and gas industry truly wanted to you know, make that commitment, um, then they would you know, study the Navy's nuclear power program, which by the way now all the nuclear submarines, all the submarines are nuclear and all the aircraft carriers are uh, nuclear propelled. So um, there's, a, there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, history and um, lessons learned. The oil and gas industry could benefit from, uh, from that culture. So you mentioned that the U.S. Navy's nuclear power program has been able to remain nuclear incident free. Can you kind of walk us through and tell us how the oil and gas industry can also achieve that amount of success? What would it take? Well, uh, first you'd have to, you, you have to accept that record. Um, if they've gone since 1954, the Navy nuclear power program, without a nuclear incident, um, uh, that, that's an incredible achievement. And if you credit the six pillars in that training program, with that success, then the question would be, how do you, how do you leverage that uh, into the oil and gas industry? And I would say the, uh, the first challenge would be budget. Uh, there would have to be uh, an investment in, in time, uh, manpower, and money into the, uh, the training from the, from the entry level position uh, all the way up to the, uh, the senior leaders uh, on the offshore uh, units. Um, I think one of the key challenges also is, is a standard that's the same across uh, each company. So that I believe it would take uh, an overarching organization such as the IADC or something of that nature uh, to help create a standard that was accepted by everyone and then, then each company could train to the same standard. Um, in the Navy, we, we move folks from submarine to submarine or from aircraft carrier to aircraft carrier. Um, so they're, they're different units, but they all uh, train and, and work and operate to the same standard. So uh, a young sailor uh, doesn't have to learn a whole new system every time he changes uh, ships. I think uh, in this free market society that is oil and gas where you have different companies, um, it's very difficult for, for a, uh, a young person or any person for that matter that works offshore uh, to maintain that high standard when he has to learn a new program every time he goes from, from uh, one unit to another or one company to another. Uh, so I think that would that would be a, a key element to the success would be to set the culture like the six pillars, set a standard, and then invest in training uh, to that standard. Well, great. You've left us with a lot to think about, Dave. All right, thank you. Thanks for joining us. This has been Catherine Scott for drillingcontractor.org. Thank you for joining us.